Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Page 10. We're recording on the 22nd of May 2023. My name is Abbas. I'm going to be your host for the show. Joining me today is uh, one of our regular panelists, uh, Meghnath from Delhi. Hi, Meghnath. Hello, Abbas. And we have a returning panelist. Uh, she's joined us before on an earlier episode of Page 10, but she's back. Joining us from Bangalore is senior journalist and content creator Sindhu Kashab. Hi, Sindhu. Hi. Hi, Abbas. Hi. So, uh, in case you're watching Page 10 for the first time, this is the Current Affairs podcast on the All About Now feed uh, from IVM Podcast and YouTube channel. What happens is we talk about current affairs, current news, whatever is happening in the headlines. Each panelist brings one piece of news to the table and we have a healthy discussion about it. Uh, you can also check out two other shows on this very feed and YouTube channel. There's ELI 10, which is Explain Like I'm 10 hosted by Meghnath and there is How to Citizen which is hosted by Meghnath and Shreyas. Uh, before we move on, uh, Meghnath, anything you want to tell us about those shows? What's the latest episodes for those shows so that people can check so, it out? On Explain Like I'm 10, we are doing a very interesting political ideology series. The first episode on socialism just came out. It was mm -hmm. with this senior journalist called A.K. Bhattacharya. Uh, Sindhu might know him. Uh, and he's a very veteran journalist, worked with Business Standard, etc. He wrote a book on uh, the first finance ministers of India. And uh, the, the thing is that he explained very nicely how they tried to establish a socialist rule and how we have now failed. <laughs> so it's, it's a very fun episode, which actually gives you an insight into what socialism really is. So please do check that out. All right. Uh, anything on the How to Citizen front? So on How to Citizen, we have Su um, Sushant Singh an actor you might know. Uh, hmm. He is talking about the journey of a shirt from the cotton fields to the market. Uh, that's an actual chapter in the 7th grade civics book. So right. it's a very fun episode. Do check it out. All right, cool. Uh, so you can, of course, check out those episodes. But let's get to the meat of today's episode. Uh, we have a bunch of things to talk about. Let's start with you, Meghnad. Uh, tell us what you have for us today. Take it away. So my story has to do with the legendary 2000 rupee note, which nobody I hope has any more, because if you do, this is going to affect you. Uh -huh. uh, the RBI has given out a circular and decided to withdraw the 2000 rupee note. Uh, so their end date for this is uh, September, which is 30th September. If you have any notes with you, 2000 rupee note, go to a bank and exchange it. Mm. Uh, there are a few conditions to it, of course. Uh, this is being done under the clean note policy, uh, as oh. the RBI is calling it. Uh, it, it is, uh, of course, the 2000 rupee note, if you don't know, was introduced uh, in 2016 when the demonetization was done. Uh, 500 rupees, 1000 rupees were de demonetized and then suddenly we have a 2000 rupee note. Hmm. 500 or 2000. Rupai kaha gaya? I have no clue. And I keep asking this question. If anybody knows, please leave a comment below. Hazar rupai kyu nahi hai paas. But anyway. Um, then, uh, so the objective of introducing the 2000 rupee notes back then was mm. that uh, overnight you are removing like a bunch of uh, notes. So yeah. the RBI was like, kya kare? So they are like, 2000 rupai. So like, hazar rupai ke jaga? Now, so then as a store of value, you have mm. to print less number of notes and make them available faster in the market. Mm. Uh, fast forward to now, those 2000 rupee notes are being withdrawn. Um, the RBI has said that they have already stopped printing 2000 rupee notes a while ago, just that now they are attempting to take it out of circulation completely. Um, so uh, RBI said that 89% of 2000 rupees notes, which were issued prior to uh, 2017 are still in existence. So uske baad se very little 2000 rupee notes were added 2017 I'm talking about. So mm -hmm. after that, they completely stopped uh, mm -hmm. printing the 2000 rupee note. Uh, and each of these notes have a lifespan of four to five years is what the RBI says. So therefore, it has already gone beyond that. So therefore, they are trying to withdraw that. When you say lifespan, um, what does it imply exactly? The note ka quality, whether it gets soiled, all the things, right? So the ones that were issued in 2017 because of the exchange, unless they are stashed somewhere, uh, you can, <laughs> they keep getting it. Assumption that everybody is exchanging the 2000 rupee note. So it gets soiled and then the lifespan decreases. So um, RBI has this policy of exchanging soiled notes. So if you have like a very old note, you can mm -hmm. go to the bank and they can exchange it immediately for you. Okay. Uh, that's the policy. So... 
that same logic is being applied to 2000 rupee notes as well uh, there are a few conditions though when you go to the bank to exchange your 2000 rupee note uh, you can only do it for 20000 rupees at a time so mm. 10 notes of 2000 rupees without right. questions asked you can get it exchanged there was some confusion about this uh, earlier there was a circular saying that everybody will have to give like id proof and stuff to exchange this then later sbi i think put out a clarification that no uh, you know uh, id proof or anything will be required till 20000 so you can deposit infinite amounts of money right. apparently uh but to exchange it in cash you just can do it 20000 rupees at once mm. uh that is what the idea is so uh there are reasons why the these notes are being withdrawn right uh one is again okay, i'm just reading out a list of reasons as i found from different sources and also the rbi right okay uh of course anti cash to hamari government hai everybody is mm. anti cash everybody wants banks mein jaake aap paisa dalo uh, so it is this move is to increase transparency and accountability i'm giving a redux of 2016 basically yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, it is to encourage digi- digital transactions and e-commerce of course uh, because then of course if cash is not there then people will go yeah. online of and course. do all the things uh right then it the cons to this is that uh, it might cause inconvenience and disruption uh, probably not as much as we saw in 2016 because humko literally do din diya tha and uh, there was no plan uh, if you remember just for listeners if you remember in 2016 uh, they were like ha we are withdrawing the currency and then later they found out that the size of the notes are not according yeah. to the atm uh, configuration so they have to reconfigure all atms across india to fit the size of the notes because yeah. the rbi had already started printing the notes so uh, bizarre bizarre exercise that was uh, so us time say at least now the burden that is being said will come or it would be primarily on bank tellers so bank tellers would be again infinitely busy till september 30th um it would also affect liquidity and uh, cash availability for a while is what is being estimated because currently about 11% of the cash in circulation is 2000 rupees notes so 11% is actually a big number technically but uh, because it's being done gradually maybe uh, it won't cause that much of a disruption now one very basic question which people are asking is after september 30th will it be legal tender yeah now there is confusion about this okay mm. i have uh, i will tell you both sides one is no it will not be legal tender right some people have been saying that oh this means that september 30th is 30th is the end date mm. so then it will not be legal tender so mm. therefore you should uh, exchange all of your money till then but then there's a, another bunch of people who are saying that uh, it will continue to be legal tender they are comparing it to a 2005 exercise which was being okay. done to replace soiled notes mm. uh, they're saying that us time jo hua tha waise hi abhi ho raha hai to we could assume that 2000 rupees will continue to be legal tender but they haven't said either way so the gray area is this right and that is what is scary because already i am seeing reports uh, there are like news channels going around and going to petrol pumps and giving 2000 rupee notes and they're like nahi nahi ab to ye kaise demonetize ho gaya and the, 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 nahi nahi hua hai i'm like no no ho gaya abhi tum ja ke leke aao so, so again this is going to happen i mean it's inevitable tum kitna bhi bologe legal tender hai people are not going to listen if no. i was a people who has 2000 rupee notes i don't right now fortunately i would also चिप विल Like this. <laughs> Correct. Uh, that's how. That's how we have caught so many corrupt people now, no? Yeah. Where did it come from? Cash, actually. Because, like, the way, so, 
पर्सन इन न्यू इंडिया a host of a news podcast <laughs> that's <laughs> that's the qualification required oh, uh, i just i yeah, don't want to yeah. that's that's a separate podcast altogether <laughs> so give us some clarity on that megnan uh so the the thing is okay so basically 2000 rupee notes according to what people are saying has been used for holding Right. right so rahul gandhi had asked this question on day 2 after the decision ki can someone explain this to me how will you stop hoarding by taking out that 1000 rupee note and putting a 2000 rupee note hmm. which is legit because that is essentially what is happening now which is uh hoarding karte hain pata tha so now you are withdrawing it so that all these hoards come out and then do it now i also have to give a political angle to this right uh, back when 2016 mein uh, this was happening i was working in parliament uh, i was with tathagat satpati and uh, the funniest things were happening inside parliament uh, one was uh, there was a big big question mark on political parties heads about political funding uh, mm. most of the money that is spent on elections in india is done in cash राइट right? mm-hmm. अगर आपको पता होगा सुना तो होगा ही कि रैलीज में जो लोग आते हैं उनको कैश पटते इट्स नो सीक्रेट एवरीबडी नोज दिस सो एसेंशियली टू गेट क्राउड्स टू स्पेंड ऑन फ्लैग्स एंड वॉट एवर एल्स यू आर डूइंग ड्यूरिंग द रैली कैश इज प्राइमरीली वॉट इज बिंग यूज पंडाल वाले वट एवर ऑल्सो पार्टी वर्कर्स को भी पैसे मिलते हैं सो so, वो भी कैश में जाता है सो सो देर वॉज ऑफकोर्स लाइक दिस क्रैम्बल to see how we can exchange this money on the political parties front mm-hmm. right some managed to do it some couldn't manage to do it basically unke lag gayi thi right mm-hmm. uh, and in 2017 a very important election was happening which was uttar pradesh uh, so the one theory during that time was that because no other political party knew that this is happening bjp might have known might not have known of course modi ji is the most honest man so he yeah. told nobody even within the bjp okay that is yeah. what we believe right now uh, yeah. so one of the reasons other parties were saying was that this is unfair to us hamara to cash chala gaya tumhare paas to itna sara cash hai so your campaign will be automatically better better yeah so the political reason this time might be the same thing because uh, we have elections coming up which is the general election we have madhya pradesh we have chatisgarh september ke baad hone wala hai so then what another political angle to this is that the people who will be most affected by this are political parties primarily opposition parties yeah. again a reason for that is that the bjp has managed to get most of its donations through electoral bonds Correct. about 85% of all electoral bonds are going to bjp so they have their source funding sorted in the banks but other parties are a lot of them are still dealing in cash so which means that their campaign will be in trouble right that's the political angle to this whole thing okay yeah. uh, you, do you guys want some fun calculations yes please yeah, yeah okay so i was thinking to 20000 rupees ka limit hai right mm. so one person can go into a bank and let's say exchange 10 notes of 2000 yeah. rupees note right so currently uh, we have notes worth 3.62 lakh crore which are in 2000 rupee notes in circulation okay uh, which means that 181 crore rupee uh, crore notes in in yeah. numbers are in circulation of 2000 rupee notes okay now i i try to find out how much uh, how how long how many trips will it take for mm. you to exchange that amount of money with the 2000 rupee limit on top right um so if it's 10 notes and we have 181 crore notes to exchange uh it means that we will we will have to divide the the 181 crores into 10 trips essentially Correct. right mm. so it's equal to 18.1 crore trips right okay. 18.1 crore trips 
yeah till september now that's the thing right it's till september right so then i was like okay so we have till september 131 working days mm. i included saturdays because poor bankers will have to yeah, work on yeah. saturdays now so yeah. 131 days so now if we divide 118.1 crore trips into 131 days that's 1.38 crore trips per day <laughs> uh, across india okay 1.38 crore trips hmm. okay uh now okay then, then i was like acha to bank pe kitna load padega so i was like so we have 137 registered banks across india right hmm. we have 766 districts so assuming that 137 banks each have at least one branch office in yeah. each, each district hmm. we have about 1,4842 bank branches everywhere right hmm. if you divide that up so 1 1.38 crore divided by 1,4842 branches that equals to 132 trips per branch per day so okay. now you can imagine what mm. kind of uh, burden mm. is going to come on the banks till mm. september 30th because everyone is going to assume that 2000 rupees ka note uske baad nahi chalne wala yeah. people are already assuming that yeah, so yeah, essentially yeah. everybody is going to try to a large extent to go and exchange the money right. which would be at the rate of 132 trips per day per <laughs> branch to exchange all the money in the country but i have a yeah, question so, so glad i don't have 2000 rupee notes <laughs> i'm so glad i'm poor for a change i'm glad i'm poor you know generally as like yaar itna sara paisa hota life mein you know you're you're quite i mean materialistic i am let me be yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but but the, for a change i'm like so glad because i remember 2016 i was in delhi hmm. and i had yes. out- and i had 1500 rupee no 1500 rupees in my wallet which suddenly is paper yeah and at Damn. 6 in the morning i go outside the hotel room and i see when ma- there was a bank one massive line and i'm like what the fuck am i going to do <laughs> I I I can't I can't reveal what happened to me on a podcast like this. When we meet Na Sindhu, I will tell you my story. It was not nice. Come come in there. And you're like, so, so uh, yeah, your wallet was money, and my bag was money. Just <laughs> let's leave it at that. So <laughs> yeah, so let's leave it at that. And you were at the parliament at that time. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Listen, I was a political operative. Okay, so I mean, oh. I'm just giving the rest to the listeners' imagination. I, uh, yeah leave it all all you can imagine all sorts of things because kuch nahi hua tha i have a question <laughs> though when, like when they say exchange the notes as in are they giving 4 500 notes for the 2000 yeah. each 2000 rupee note okay that's And the I, idea essentially so like notes? all ha hmm? go ahead all 2000 rupee notes will be exchanged to 500 rupees notes uh, okay. till 20000 so okay got it yeah and are they going to reintroduce the 1000 rupee note then i doubt it I mean, अभी तक तो कुछ नहीं है मतलब आई एंड दो माई ऑल्सो वरी इज दैट नाउ आई थिंक फाइव हंड्रेड रुपीज का नोट का प्रिंटिंग विल हैव टू बी इन सेन बिकॉज अर्लियर थाउजेंड रुपीज था सो यू मेड इट टू थाउजेंड तो हाफ कर दिया सर्कुलेशन यू नो यू डोट यू टू प्रिंट हाफ द नंबर ऑफ नोट नाउ विथ टू थाउजेंड गोइंग अवे यू हैव टू प्रिंट फोर टाइम्स द नंबर ऑफ नोट सो देन इट्स इट्स गोइंग टू बी अ नाइट मेयर देयर ऑल्सो Mm-hmm. um i i found out some uh, statistics for how many notes we have uh, mm-hmm. per denomination okay so as of march 2023 10, 11% is 2000 notes right uh, which which have to be changed yeah. uh, 500 rupee notes are 51% mm-hmm. uh, 100 rupee notes is 21% and others which is 10 20 whatever others are 17% so okay. if we have to see it that way then if 11% goes away it doesn't mean that uh, the so 11% into 4 hoga wo essentially because right. 500 rupee note mein convert kar raha hai to so that's the i don't know how that will happen but i guess hum to so sab ab imandar log hai so like hum to sab bank mein dalenge to note kar try print karne ki zarurat hi kya hai after september will the 500 rupee note be the highest denomination note we have in the country seems like it actually okay. seems like it that 500 rupees will be the uh, highest you know i'm i'm a little uncertain about that 
I mean, it does take away the incentive of people from mm. keeping large amounts of cash. To be honest, um, that's one thing that you can derive from this. But yeah, I guess five hundred will be the highest value. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, cool. Uh, we hope if you if you're listening to this and have a two thousand rupee note, get it exchanged because we don't know what will happen after September. We will uh, yeah. see what happens. And uh, thank you for that, Meghnad. Uh, yep. So at this point, we'll take a short break. Uh, when we come back, we'll hear the stories that Sindhu has and I have. Uh, but if you're watching this on YouTube, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, press the bell icon so that you can know when any new episode drops out. Drops out, drops on the channel so that you can check it out. Uh, and yeah, <laughs> we'll see you on the other side of the screen. Hey, it's been another great week on the IVM Podcasts Network. On the Habit Coach podcast, Ashton answers a listener's question on how one can make time to exercise in their busy working day. On all things policy, Malati Renati, Sachin Kalbag, and Sambhya Nandan talk about the role played by society, government, and markets in elderly care. And on Explain Like I'm Ten, Meghnad is joined by author A.K. Bhattacharya and stand-up comedian Puneet Panya. They try to answer the question, "What is socialism?" Once again, don't forget to visit our merch store on ivmpodcast.com. We have some exciting stuff for you. Follow us on social media. We are IVM Podcasts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. If you like our shows, spread the word, tell your friends, and don't forget to rate and review them wherever you're listening to them. You'll also find all our shows on youtube.com/ivmpodcasts. And finally, we would like to thank our sponsors this week: Cash Free Payments and HDFC Mutual Fund. Thank you for making this possible. And we're back on page ten. We just heard Meghnad's story and what's happening with the two thousand rupee note. Let's go to Sindhu. Sindhu, you're joining us from Bangalore. What do you have for us? Uh, we already discussed the Bangalore election, so it's not that. But uh, tell us what you have for us. Really, you're not discussing elections anymore because my WhatsApp <laughs> groups are still buzzing with it. I was like, okay, I thought the elections are over. It's like you I, know I that, that them, annoying no that Karnataka. annoying mark. <laughs> that annoying mark election mark that just refuses to go till the next election. I thought it's yeah. happening till then, but yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, Sindhu, uh, tell us what do you have. So the uh, if we are not talking politics, the next interesting topic that can come from Bangladesh is technology, and yes. uh, one thing that everyone has been obsessed in talking over is ChatGPT. ChatGPT, this ChatGPT, that. You know what is interesting is what I'm seeing is how it has completely divided not just the people but also the complete tech community, right? You have people like uh, I think Elon Musk, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, Elon Musk had commented that you know it is wrong, it is not right. Then you have this whole bunch of not just Elon Musk, a whole bunch of tech leaders who said that you know using AI becoming so strong and powerful is actually a scary thing. And then you have this whole bunch of people saying you know AI should not be rejected, but it should be taken in and embraced and used and all of that. Now, interestingly, what is happening is countries are ban- banning it. Uh, fun side note: China had their own version of uh, Chat GPT that they built. And uh, someone asked the question on what is the origin of COVID nineteen, and mm. Chad, their version of Chat GPT shut down. So I don't know. It's kind of <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course it did. <laughs> so we can all discuss and speculate that maybe for the next podcast. But yeah, anyway, it mm. shut down. So China apart, you have countries like Italy. Then there's New York City public schools that is like going up and down whether they should, you know, have. Um, uh, Reverse the ban on Chat GPT, or keep the ban, or embrace AI, and all of those conversations. So it's quite interesting. But what is really, what really got my attention is how even tech players like Apple have banned uh, the use of Chat GPT. Mm, Now the okay. point is, what is Chat GPT? When you look at, when I read this, they say it's uh, Apple had even reportedly barred GitHub's automatic coding tool Copilot as well. Now mm. it. could be two reasons either they are really really scared of you know what ai can go ahead and do and then whether we'll have uh, altron in real life or not or uh, or they are themselves building the their own ai tools which right. i think is the latter obviously they are building their own ai tools so it's it's easier that you buy when you're anyway selling a kidney to buy an apple product you might as well have your own ai products for it yeah right absolutely So, but can you just tell us when 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 you say ban, do you mean just outright ban, like you can't use the use? The yeah. So, 
so yeah that's 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 what it is it is not clear because they're still in conversations and in everything in us goes through this capital hill conversations and you have uh, hearings where people ask sometimes really dumb questions but <laughs> some but they do have something semblance of hearing i don't know if for uh, other countries especially mm. like our own like that make money we run how sent an ad senator <laughs> <laughs> no uh, how do you open facebook was another question oh <laughs> So everything, uh, something on the internet also was a question. So yeah. Mm. Anyway, uh, that's a separate topic altogether. But what I find interesting about it is how there is just such open dialogue and conversation. Now, when you look at Chat GPT as a product and as a tool, mm. I don't know if you people have used it, and I know you said that you have used it in parts and all of that. But what I have we used never it. said that. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. Go on. I'll tell you how I use it later. Go on. <laughs> so uh, it's interesting. I uh, like we. Some of us were playing around with it, and we asked some really random questions, like you know, can you tell us um, some? Okay. Oh shit! I can't say any of this. But... <laughs> <laughs> on record, I can't say any of this. But later on, I like how I want to know Meghna's uh, demonetization story. I have a chat yeah. GPT story. Give us like okay. a give. without giving anything away if you can give us like a broader sense of what what in what sense um, yeah, 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 <laughs> it started okay. with fun and games so let me leave it at that fun and games with players right. and then what i found interesting is as you keep using the product and as you keep using the app it's it's really intelligent it starts picking mm-hmm. on and it gets better and better and you can even i was doing this one experiment right in this you know this publication style like a new york times or a new york new new yorker style and it actually writes it like that right and it's it's interesting because what it does is it uh, you on the plus side it removes a lot of your uh, time and effort it makes things a lot easier a lot of your menial mm. tasks easier uh and it also gives you space to think of a lot of ideas and a lot of uh, overarching points that you can feed in that possibly get it in a more uh, systemized format through Ch- chat gpt but what is scary is and i'm sure a lot of these writers get into associations even neil gaiman was a part of it was protesting yeah. against it is that it's taking away serious jobs hardcore jobs yeah. because yeah. you know if you're going to take away a writing career it means uh my career is <laughs> is definitely in stake uh, a lot of people's career journalists career are in stake and it's 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 also a very interesting time because you don't know whether journalists can use it can reporters can it make you a better reporter like can you take all your reportage and put it in chat gpt and get out the final product on it and you know work on that final product or what it is it's it's kind of very early days but it's interesting to see how there are such diverse reactions within one country and then across now interestingly with the public schools before i um, stop and you know if you have something with when you look at public uh, schools is it it's it's like they are calling this that you know if you if i give a kid an assignment the work for the assignment will become obsolete but i'm yeah. thinking in the end of the day you still have to input stuff like if i have an assignment like i had some really shitty assignments in school which i never completed on time but if you have an assignment on let's say the world war 2 or something like that you can always you anyway have to read up because you have to give that input to chat gpt it's not going to create something on its own yes it does on some way some levels but you do have to put in your research and you can't uh, do that in so it's it's i think it's very early for everyone to talk about bans or uh, this and The interesting thing about banning anything is it makes it all the more uh, enticing for people. Correct. Yeah. yeah. As we have uh, recently noticed with a movie, with Kerala story. Yes, in West okay. Bengal is like, of course. Why was it banned? Like anyway? Seems uh-huh. like another podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking we're having so many side topics for different podcasts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Chaji pini, Chaji pini. Yeah. Chaji pini. <laughs> so it's interesting i find people going to lens of trying to ban it okay and also go, uh, other side going to the lens to say no no it has to be a part of everything i think any form of technology any piece of technology or any product that is built the interesting thing about it is you need to see how you can add on top of it or how it can be used to add on top of your work not hmm. remove something uh, so it's really unfair if you're trying to remove a particular task altogether but can you use it to make reportage better can you use it to make the original raw writing better so there are different ways to look at ai uh, 
But yeah, it's interesting in early days because there are still conversations going on. Sam Altman is talking about it, and it just it just goes to and another interesting thing. It's a, it's for a, for after a long time, and I think for a change, uh, Google is really scared. Yeah. 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 Google is yeah. really scared. So obviously, the lobbying from Google side is understandable. Lob- lobbying mm. from Apple side is understandable. <laughs> But it also shows that you know if. human this is a little philosophical but anyway i'm going to put it out there like um, you know if human beings can create a product like chat gpt which is so intelligent in its own way and in its own manner i think as human beings and as human work it needs to evolve as well so we need to look hmm. back and how we can evolve our work and maybe i'm not saying embrace ai but we don't have to reject ai as well completely right hey. i have a question to both of you sindhu and meghnad um can ai or can chat gpt have an original thought because it's essentially sourcing everything from stuff that's already out there so hmm. when you want an original thought something that comes for lack of a better word straight from a person's heart you're still going to rely on the human aspect of it right absolutely As i i don't think uh, i don't think there is such a thing called an original thought of us uh, one one thing is like again philosophically speaking even uh-huh. when you think you are giving an original spot it comes from your collective yeah. experiences and information and everything and uh, sure you can say that you can do more abstract thinking yeah, uh, yeah. i think you can say that like for yeah. example if you watch a movie um your review of the movie will be di- very different from my review of the movie but the fact is that your review of the movie will be also based on your experiences and information you have and mine will also be based on the same thing so i feel like original thought when you're talking about it it's a little uh, tricky to define uh, because okay. think about it like if if our brain is essentially what is being replicated as an ai because these are called neural networks yeah. like it's essentially doing the same thing which our brain does right uh, just that it's doing it faster it can remember more things and it can also like connect more dots than we can possibly imagine so mm. that is again a thing but yeah uh, sindhu if you have any take on this so yeah when you speak about original thought and abbas I, i'm guessing you're meaning to say that from your own personal collective experiences like meknath said what mm. if you come up with a thought and idea that that cannot be uh, taken created by ai so at the moment it might not be possible immediately mm. in the way you are saying it but i don't see that as an impossibility like think about it right uh, if you told me even 10 years back that we're going to have a podcast sitting like this i think all of yeah. us would have laughed right all of us would have laughed about it uh, you know none of us would have believed it to be possible in this way but it is happening and 10 years is not a long time frame yeah right? but i mean in the in the case of this example the we are using tools essentially to again make it easier for us to connect and we are still putting our own thoughts out there uh, if you let's let's take the neil gaiman thing for example uh, you can ask an ai to write a novel like neil gaiman and it will reproduce that uh, mm. to a large mm. extent but an, an a writer a kid who grows up reading neil gaiman and many other authors when when he or she puts out their uh, version of a story they'll filter all of those experiences through their mind and through their experiences right so that will yeah. obviously be more original more valuable in quotes than an ai output i can i can argue i can argue this way yeah. as well the same point that you made a bus so i wrote a book right mm. um, now as as uh, sindhu said google is scared right mm-hmm. they have been fast tracking their ai deployment because of this whole chat gpt thing the mm-hmm. one thing that they did i think it happened two weeks ago they had this io conference uh, google mm-hmm. io conference where they unveiled what their ai which is bard can do and uh, their other uh, ai model is called palm right so palm 2 is what their model is called like chat gpt this is that's gpt this is palm 2 Okay. Uh it's quite stunning because they are going to integrate their AI into Google Drive. Right? If you do Bard right now, for example, the calculations that I just told you, I used AI to do it. Uh, I asked it questions. I asked questions to three AIs. So whenever I have to do this, now what I do is I check Bard, I do Bing, and then I do ChatGPT. Now I got browser for it, so I do that as well, and then I match the three and then if two of them are giving me the same answer then i go and look it up and see so that is how i know that it's correct right, right. but the point being that um, they are going to deploy this uh, whole whole ai business on their drive thing 
so for example my whole book my all my chapters my first book and the second book i'm working on all my scripts all my uh, notes are all on google drive now i don't mm. tell the ai yeah. to basically just pick up my style so it will mm. go through all of my work and it is going to reproduce everything according to what i want right in my language so like what you're talking about neil gaiman actually mm. turns out it's an advantage for me because then i can actually uh, easily create scripts i can easily create which is more sounding more like me right now when i have to do that i have to do a base script and then i have to make it sound like me right uh, so then where I do you stand on the it. banning aspect of it like that hmm where do you stand on the banning aspect of the restriction aspect of i it? don't think it should be banned i want to be replaced i keep telling this to people <laughs> guys come on kisko kaam karna hai please I mean, like, what is this? What is this? Oh, AI, I have to work. I have to work. I'm like, of course, do it. Like, what is it? You have to do so much work. So I should be in a position where I am like a director. I use AI as yeah. a, my intern, as yeah. my research assistant, as my therapist, as my uh, script writers, as my everything. Right. So I just tell it, "Ki boss, you are a script writer today. Uh, hmm. These are the parameters. This is the thing I want from you. Do it." So yeah. um, as a base script, it does a better job than an intern, but it is as good as an intern or better. But to be a, it is still an intern. After it, I get the product. I have to review it. I have to do changes according to what I want, etc. And then I make changes according to what I want, right? Okay. For example, for uh, the last three months, uh, page ten, uh, mm. all the research, etc., has been done by AI for me. right yeah. um, i i have been using bing right for example right. two months ago i think right bing so around whatever episodes right i have to cross check of course i don't blindly rely on it i have to fact check i have to do like oh kaun sa source hai kya kiya hai yahan pe etc etc right meena are you and... the other regular panelist on this show is chat gpt along with yes <laughs> precisely yes thank you abbas <laughs> that that i agar if i could if i huh. could an ai basically can replicate me right hmm. i feed it this information ek bhai kaise de dunga you're freaking Please. me out I'm actually talking it's to us <laughs> it's happened but it's happened it's happened in saudi happened. i was going to say this it's happened in okay. saudi where they've done it they have replicated in uh, uh, which tv anchor yeah tv anchor replicated hmm. a tv ai tv anchor went and had a interview with someone amazing so, this is this is a very <laughs> so this was my next question it's great you brought this up so any new major technological development right when social media apps were coming mm. out we all always see it as a beacon yeah. of hope and everything and it like look at twitter okay in the last 10 years it's gone like it's used to spread hate speech it's used to spread misinformation now the example you just gave they replicated a news anchor accurately now you can replicate any news anchor and make them say whatever they want according Absolutely. to your your uh, agendas yeah. so where, where i mean isn't that another reason for us to regulate but, but uh, that's 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 the that's the thing right that's the flip side of any technology like if you know how you talk spoke about social media see mm. the fact is ai is already on use right mm. google knows everything google knows your home address google knows what you eat what you shop uh, who your sp- uh, spouse slash spouses are okay yeah. who your <laughs> spouse slash girlfriend boyfriend or whatever are yeah. partners are Google yeah. knows everything about you, right? AI is already in play and in place. The only difference here is it's little more out in the open, and there it's now impacting a certain sect and type of jobs. Now, right. what I'm saying, I would say, I would say that, impact- yeah, but I would say that earlier the the AI that we had, which is algorithms, that was curative AI. What mm-hmm. we are seeing right now is generative AI. Yes. So yes. Yeah. Yeah. There no, is there is that difference. Of obviously yeah. there is that. Uh, stark difference but what i'm saying is by trying to ban something regulate sure maybe we can debate on that later but trying to ban something is not going to stop or stall the growth of something 10 people are going to use more of it in every yeah. way possible no also if it if it makes your life easier like exactly. it's a tool right if it it's makes your tool. life easier for example it's like saying ki google docs use mat karo bas word use karna hai right and you have to sit in office and use the computer to do like word pe documents and then you can go home that's ridiculous because yeah. i mean google docs pe i can work with abbas in bombay and me in delhi and write right. a script together right and yeah. it, it's Absolutely. it's like a no brainer to use it similarly yeah. if you, if i have an ai assistant on the side who is working with us while both of us are writing a script 
we have this intern who is also like helping us write the script it's the same thing just that absolutely having said that i do agree with your point about uh, writers right so, so yeah, remember we discussed this abbas during the writer strike story that yeah, we yeah. Yeah. and i said that uh, the ai cannot write mere paas ma hai exactly yeah. so <laughs> that sort of original thought of course it's yeah. not doing it right now I, right. i wouldn't even expect it to do it right now i shouldn't even expect it to do it that's mm. that's the point right i i feel like what what we need to look at it as is just a tool right so any piece of technology i think first instead of being uh, you know very of it or scared of it or seeing how to regulate it i think it's first important to see like megnat said how you can use it as a tool not mm. to replicate things but to make your menial like i was mentioning menial tasks a little more easier or something more simpler can how can you use it as a tool before you think of bringing in regulations or outright banning it or something to that effect mm. uh but yeah on original thought i agree i agree it's immediately not giving it but i do feel that uh it's possible over time it is going to be possible can i can i freak you out uh, abbas your question about you uh, you, go ahead <laughs> i'll freak you out more uh, yeah. so there is this uh, uh, i said there's this lecture i saw so the people who made social dilemma they mm. gave a lecture called the ai dilemma right you definitely should watch it on youtube it's crazy okay uh, they had this in- yeah ha hmm? huh. they have this in- interesting sort of uh, thought experiment that they said that think about it so for example uh, abbas so like right now uh, let's say a atheist is arguing with a religious person hmm. right uh the religious person has their own argument the atheist has their own arguments right okay. the religious person is basing it on the religious texts and etc mm. that they have consumed yeah. the atheist person has consumed a lot of philosophers etc now they are having a dialogue right okay. now if you are someone who wants to essentially spread religious propaganda right mm. what you will do is you will create two ais and you will make them infinitely talk to each other until the religious person is able to convince the atheist person right so by having this argument simulated simultaneously which will happen in minutes right and if you had to do it in real time you will host a 10 episode debate on this and then like come to whatever this is being done by ai it will keep doing it right at the end of this you will have one uh, like a literal literal 10 uh, point agenda which is created by this arguing uh, religious ai mm-hmm. which you can use in your own propaganda right that's mm-hmm. one way second mm-hmm. way the scariest thing mm-hmm. have two religious people mm-hmm. arguing with each other proving that their religion is better mm-hmm. and then keep them keep make keep making them do that right and if it's the same religion hinduism is the best right for example or any islam is the best both mm. of them continue arguing islam is the best and putting points after points after point there mm. will come a point where the ai will give you an original thought which yeah. you haven't thought of yeah. right because each of this ai is trying to one up the other and right. in that process they will keep doing it keep doing it until uh, they will have like solid arguments in place which you cannot simulate even if you want to right mm. so uh, that is the thing right you know where uh, if you want to use ai for propaganda uh, i i think uh, daily show did this whole uh, biden ad yeah. with, with with his voice ai generated yeah. voice it yeah. sounds creepily like biden yeah. as if he's making the funniest ad campaign for himself uh, and you can do that right yeah. you yeah. need 3 seconds of audio to replicate yeah. anybody's voices and make them say anything yeah. now that so, is where we are this is a slight digression but uh, do are either of you aware of the fake drake song Yes. Yes. At the so Drake the, and uh, Weekend. Weekend the collab. The yeah. the music company uh, is very confused whether they can sue for copyright because the song is original. So <laughs> it's back to does Drake own his own voice? Because yeah. He's not. They're yeah. not singing a song. They've not. They're not reproducing something that they already put out. It's an original song, but done in Drake's voice, and it sounds real. So how do you strike it for copyright? But. Yeah. Uh, they found a loophole around it which is a longer conversation yes indu you wanted to say something but just uh, 
go on go for, it, go for it go for it go for it go for it it's okay uh, no no grimes actually find us found a solution for this abbas so if mm-hmm. you look at grimes which so he said that you take my voice you take my songs make ai generate original content but just give me a part of it like be, yeah. through the goodness of your heart you know right. uh, like use it use it but yeah. but you know give me credit and also uh, pay me a little bit of royalty for using my uh songs etc for your inspiration is what she called right. it again that's my thing right you know like if you have let like, let's say a van gogh paintings whatever uh, van gogh is dead but if you have a uh, like a current painter mm. or an artist who is making their own paintings mm. now ai is sort of taking their style and creating some original painting mm. what would be ideal is if mm. this artist actually gets a cut of it exactly it's sold yeah. so that exactly. might be one solution <laughs> Sindhu, you wanted to say? No, I was just saying it just says that maybe it's the original thought is not that far away as well. It's yeah, yeah, uh, artificial general <laughs> intelligence. Guys, I'll quit. <laughs> I'll go work something else. Uh, but... Or like, make that said, काम किसको करना है? काम किसको करना है? Yeah, I mean, no, I, 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 yeah. Abbas, tell me uh, something, right? Uh, with has it aged well? Hmm. You can't use AI for that. Correct, because uh, essentially we are reassessing a movie that uh, we came out years ago. Yeah. Uh, so we are, we are. There is the time aspect that's added to it. That how much has society changed since whatever 1995 yeah. to 2023? So yeah. Actually, you But, can, right? I mean, I don't think. Can. Sindhu, I was trying to have yeah. a moment and convince <laughs> myself. No, I've got this one thing, <laughs> and you took that away from me. <laughs> इंडिया वी आर स्टिल ग्रैपलिंग विद मोर प्रेसिंग इशूज रिगार्डिंग टेक्नोलॉजी बट एनी फोर साइट इन टू वॉट how india might react to this when it really gets uh, going uh, ai do you think will be i think the the impact will be country which has banned tiktok <laughs> exactly why did it ban tiktok so that's that you're just answering your own question right, right. Uh, i think it will india the impact will happen only when a particular political agenda is hurt Mm, a larger right. political agenda is hurt it i think that's when everyone will sit up and take notice because even our data data and privacy laws which we have been harping for so many years we are still yet to see significant move like there is move but mm. you know all this is but you'll see fast impact when there is a certain political agenda mm. like something works in uh, and i'm not talking about any partic- particular political party any political party has a particular agenda Yeah, and they feel uh, it needs to be bought on fr- forefront. They will bring it on forefront. If they feel it doesn't have to, it won't be. So, uh, India is a lot different, boss. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, at least But the, the prime speeches will be like have happened quicker. <laughs> I, I I try to make friends the... might not friends in the Hindi version might not be that easy to replicate. It's <laughs> not. I already tried that. It doesn't work. Uh, I tried it. I made it write a speech in Nehru's voice. It did. Huh. It sounded like Nehru. Uh, Nehru huh. was uh, Nehru was nice. You know, like I mean, बहुत बहुत ये था. Farmer suicide पे defend करने के लिए speech लिखने बोला uh, इसको. Huh. Uh, they were like, oh, we take complete responsibility. Hmm. The AI said this in yeah, Nehru's yeah. voice that yeah. uh, we take complete responsibility for the suicides and we will solve this. It's a social malu all the things. Then I told it, "Ki what are you doing? Why are you taking responsibility? Blame the opposition." It changed it. It changed it. It started. Oh, the opposition in the last seventy years did nothing. I was like, "Whoa, that's amazing!" I mean, Nehru ji, you made it. Look at yeah, Nehru ji, you changed it. And I was like, "What are you saying?" Meenath, it's Nehru ji who is responsible for farmers. Yeah, suicide. of course. Yes. What do you mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but just for the first time. <laughs> yeah, just for the listeners, I have a video on my channel of me doing this. So keep uh, go ahead. You can watch it also, where uh, I make AI write a Nehru speech. See, so please, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Abbas, try it's it. Super fun. It's super fun. I mean, I I'm like not trying speeches and all, but it's fun. <laughs> sure. Okay, cool. I think that was a nice and healthy discussion about AI. Thank you, Sindhu, for that uh, piece of news. Uh, and you're we'll never going to call me back because no, I no, can't. Of course, we'll call. <laughs> <laughs> 
no, no, you've enlightened us to the powers of art. So, of course, you'll be back. Uh, okay, we have to go to a quick break. When we come back, yeah. we'll do the last story for this episode. I uh, will see you right after this. Hi, this is Cyrus Rogan Brocha, PR Say Rogues. Uh, I've come up with a brand new idea. It's a premium product called Club Cyrus Says. It's an offer open just for you. Let me tell you about the product. We've got exclusive cock and bull episodes just for you. That's right, just for you. That means others don't get to see it. Also, you get exclusive footage, extra bits, the uncut version of the interviews with celebrities. And these are huge celebrities, not small-time celebrities. Only the big guys come on the show. So you'll get the exclusive bits that nobody else gets. The extra tidbits, special stuff, uncensored stuff, stuff you don't want to put out. That's just for you. And for our audio listeners, you get special ad-free content and early access to interviews and sessions and the podcasts which nobody else will get. You'll get it first. You're the first people. You're Neil Armstrong. You're Edmund Hillary. You're whoever discovered India. You're that. And by becoming an exclusive member of Club Cyrus Says, you get the power. We transfer the power to you and you become the producers and you will decide what content or what happens on that show. You are the masters and we are your... We can't use words like that. People who work for the masters, basically. So guys, get in. Special audio features include... Uh, I forget. I can't remember what the hell. <laughs> and we're back on page 10. We've already heard from Sindhu and Meghna. Let's get to the last story of this episode or this week, uh, which is uh, being done by me. So, this is about the Aryan Khan drug case, which uh, came to light last year in October when Aryan Khan was arrested from a from a, sh- a, a ship, a yacht. What do, what do you want to call it? Yacht party. <laughs> Your party. Your party. Your party. Yes. So a lot of things have uh, happened since then. Uh, chiefly, a couple of uh, weeks ago, the CBI has claimed that the Mumbai NCB was essentially trying to uh, 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 to uh, demand rupees twenty five crores from uh, from uh, Shahrukh Khan, and uh, they have filed an FIR against them. Uh, Samir Vankheda is the main officer who is in the limelight right now. But I want to focus on this thing that came over, uh, came to light over the weekend, where some WhatsApp conversations allegedly between Shah Rukh Khan and Samir Vankheda uh, were uh, given to the media. The conversations were uh, alleged conversations were part of Vankheda's petition seeking to seeking of the quashing of the CBI FIR, and uh, the veracity or the authenticity of these chats remains dubious it was broken by the free press journal the free press journal have uh, themselves said that they cannot uh, assess or rather uh, quantify or verify these chats but i'll just read some of the chats that have come and i would like to know you people's uh, opinion on it um this is what shahrukh khan i'm going to read parts of it the conversation between shahrukh khan and samir van khede on whatsapp uh, Shahrukh Khan, the headline says, Shahrukh Khan begged Samir Van Khede to keep, I beg you, please don't let Aryan rot in that jail. And throughout the WhatsApp chat, as is not uncommon, Shahrukh seems very sort of uh, like dabahua and very meek in front of this officer. Uh, he says that uh, you ha- uh, please be very gentle with my son and uh, starts off by saying, Samir Sahib, may I speak with you for a minute, please? And all of these messages are signed off by Love SRK, which is a little <laughs> awkward when you're reaching out to an officer about your son. It's a little, little off-putting. Uh, SRK says, I know this is officially inappropriate and maybe outright wrong, but once as a father, if I can speak with you, please love SRK. Is it a good time to call? And he sort of reaches out to him a couple of times. And Samir Vankhede's responses to all of these messages from the biggest Bollywood star are essentially just one or two lines where he says, yes, Shah Rukh, uh, Aryan has been very nice. I'm very aware of the fact that uh, you as a father must be suffering and uh, don't worry, we will look after him and all of that. And then Shah Rukh is essentially praising him for being so lenient. At one point, Shah Rukh even says, would you speak with my daughter? I will make her call you just now. We need uh, to set example for the youth uh, to be, you know, nice and safe. And we have done our part and now it's their uh, responsibility to go ahead. Uh, Guys, what do you think about these chats? Do you think they are authentic? 
I can totally believe that. Uh, I mean, none of us are uh, averse to the fact that when any of us gets in trouble, we all become very like subservient and meek in front of the authorities. So maybe Shah Rukh Khan reached out to uh, Samir Vankhede by some back channels, but the language used in these chats seemed to be very weird and obscure. And also, uh, some uh, people from Shah Rukh Khan's side says that that the, he never uses WhatsApp. So this definitely yeah. cannot be him. Uh, there was this one line I was reading. I just I was just looking at a screenshot. I, I'm not mm-hmm. sure if you have it also, but like there was this line about uh, something like, "Oh, you know what the person from the north wants, and I, that is what is happening," or something mm-hmm. of that sort, which Shah Rukh Khan is saying to one kid apparently. Yeah. yeah, I found that very bizarre. I was like, "Ye kya bol raha hai? Like, and I, I don't think he will talk like this. I just don't. I just don't feel like Shah Rukh Khan would talk to one kid at all." To be okay. honest, uh, yeah. because a he's too powerful, right? Mm. Let's not kid ourselves. Like Shah Rukh Khan is powerful, right? right. Uh, and uh, one kid in front of him is basically nothing. He's just an officer, mm. right? Mm. Uh, sure, he might be trying to extort money from him or whatever, but uh, all said and done, Shah Rukh Khan can pull strings. Every right. he can hire the most powerful lawyers. He can uh, you know bribe the most powerful officers. Yeah. He can do whatever he wants, right? Yeah. The fact There's that he one... did none of that <laughs> is important, right? The I, fact I that he just, he just, yeah, go There's ahead. One, one uh, paragraph which I thought was like that clinched it for me, uh, where Shah Rukh says, "Please tell them to go easy, man, and let me let 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 me get my son home. Please, there is nothing more I can say or do, but beg you, please." I again don't think Shah Rukh Khan will spell it out like that, saying, "I beg." Yeah. You. And yeah. the, especially, think, please let them, please tell them to go easy, man. <laughs> Sorry, <yeah. laughs> Sorry Sindhu, you were saying. I mean, it's I. I don't know if any uh, you guys would have obviously seen Shah Rukh Khan's interviews and videos. He's actually yeah, a witty yeah, yeah. person. He's yeah. quite witty. Also, very articulate. Quite, yeah, extremely See, articulate. Can, can, please yeah, go can, easy, see. man. But he's, <laughs> he's fifty-six, so he's still an uncle. So <laughs> I can I can believe that part of it. <laughs> that none of our fathers are as articulate on text as they are verbally. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, so the uh, CBI says that uh, the plan was to extort him for twenty five crores, which apparently was bargained down to fifty uh, to eighteen crores. So there was an exchange of rupees fifteen lakhs uh, between Pooja Dadlani, who's Shah Rukh's assistant, and one of the cops as well from from there from the NCB's end. Is what uh, what the info I have. But Sindhu, you've also been following this case roughly. Uh, what is your takeaway from this? A lot of people on on social media are saying if if the biggest superstar in the country has to beg a, an officer like this, uh, what hope do we have for the rest of us? First of all, I don't know if Shah Rukh Khan seems like the kind of personality who will go and beg anyone. Right. And mm. like Mingna said, he's he's quite. He's quite powerful. He's not like yeah. um, a new. He's not. A, it's not like he's a new upcoming star. Yeah. He's quite mm-hmm. powerful. He's been. He's got connections, and I think one of the most countries. Forget countries. I think any part of the world. He calls a lawyer. Calls anyone. Will just come and fight a case for him. He has the resources. Clearly, if twenty five crores is being demanded out of him, like pocket, and he's giving fifteen lakhs like pocket change, then. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like really, that the figure came down to it. Which means there was bargaining with the cops. अरे सुनो ना यार तुम रखो उसको एक हफ्ता पर पैसा लोड़ा कम लो. One kid is like तेरे बेटे की कीमत तुझे पता है क्या? No, I think Charu is like आ पच्चीस करोड़ तो नहीं ज़्यादा हो गया अठरा करोड़ में ठीक है मेरा बेटा अठरा करोड़ के वर्थ हो सकता है. And then it's gone down to fifteen lakhs. That's amazing. <laughs> Fifteen lakh was the initial uh, down payment. Down payment tha ho. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Ki usko jail mein kuch nahi karna. Ha, pata hai lakh. No, and there was this other uh, other fellow who came into the limelight during. He took a selfie with Aryan Khan. Some yeah, Gosavi, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now the people are saying that he was the guy who was making demands from one kid. Oh. Uh, okay. The the guy who took the selfie. Again, what a dumbass. लेकिन स्टार के साथ फोटो भी लेना है 
जाने देंगे अगर तू इन्फॉर्मर बन जाए so then Abbas, he was like yes <laughs> abas you know i take everything back this is so original thought for yeah. me <laughs> <laughs> yeah i never write this yeah i never write this there you go <laughs> yeah no so and uh, but but Uh, but thanks to this whole saga of aryan khan we got like some golden moments from tv news like that <laughs> reporter following deepika or like deepika the oh, okay. drugs le to deepika deepika the de, bolo like that happened then there was like this whole drama which was outside the jail and cbi office yeah. and ncb office they were stationed constantly and reporting nothing was happening there were mm. just cars coming in and out and Weirdly enough, there were questions being asked of other celebrities also during that time, yeah. uh, and that was also became a big thing. Although none of the celebrities ended up actually in the NCB, except like I think Aryan Khan's friends. Uh, yeah. Other than that, nobody was really. Uh, and if you involved. remember during that time, what I found really funny was he Aryan Khan himself was not caught in possession. He was yeah. just yeah. in the wrong place at the wrong time. The wrong time. Yeah. So it's. And uh, Navika, Navika going. Oh, he has hash and bud. Now I'm not. I'm. I'm not aware of drug lingo, but I think hash and bud is related to something, something, something drug. Okay, and what Emma Bounce was supposedly apparently a drug uh, signal yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my favorite yeah, thing was uh, so one of the. Should be getting Pulitzer Prize. I don't know why <laughs> she's sitting here like this. I mean, where should she go? She should go to Satran Ji. Satran Ji's Satran Ji's Satran Ji's Satran Ji's Satran Ji's Satran Ji's नहीं 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 छह लाख नो 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 दस लाख नो पूरे चौदह लाख का जो सतरेंज जी खरीदा है अरविंद केजरीवाल के घर के लिए ओके लव इट लव लव वे टीवी टीवी न्यूज़ इज़ गोइंग इन ऑल दिस माय फेवरेट पार्ट फॉर ऑल ऑफ़ दिस वाज़ सो वन ऑफ़ द बॉयज़ व्हिच वाज़ हु वाज़ अरेस्टेड विथ आर्यन वाज Yeah, my favorite thing was that when uh, finally they all got bail and ha- got to go home, Arbaz Merchant and his father had this photo as where Arbaz Merchant, the teenager, is hiding his face, but his father is looking at the camera. <laughs> 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 I'm like, man, what a way to embarrass your like this. You know, now he will never take drugs. But like, yeah, embarrassment. I will not be. <laughs> No, also shows what that guy, the the father, was super yeah. confident. Na, he's exactly. like, "Isko yeah. kya hi karne wale hai log?" Yeah. Victory <laughs> side is like the boy was like, "Shit!" <laughs> like, <laughs> like he was not as embarrassed for getting caught with drugs than his father being like, "Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah." But that's that's typical teenage reaction, right? Exactly. What your yeah. parents do is more embarrassing. Uh, what do you guys think will come out of it do you think samir vankhede is going down or is this going to be one of those cases will just dissolve in a few months and everybody will forget it i feel like samir vankhede is a very weird character in general mm. Uh, mm. like there are many stories about him yeah, for yeah, yeah. years now right you know yeah. i think he was also in that whole sharukh khan ne vankhede stadium mein kuch kiya tha tab bhi yeah. kuch bhi uska role tha like tab se wo khunnas kha ke baitha hai kuch to bhi yeah. and uh, i think he is a sharukh khan fan Yeah, I, I genuinely believe that Possibly, he's a yeah. Shah Rukh Khan fan, and he's obsessed with him. Maybe, and therefore he just he does these things so once in a while. Basically, he's basically trying to bring Shah Rukh Khan's own movies to life. He yeah, he's basically take, yeah. he's Shah Rukh from Dar. He's a jaded <laughs> fan. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, मुझे अटेंड किया अब मैं बताएगा. Is it is it Shah Rukh from? I think it's more than Dar. It's I think Shah Rukh from fan, the movie fan. Oh, the, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. 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 Yep
बट आई आई डोंट थिंक सो एक तो ब्यूरोक्रेट आर रेयरली एवर acted upon in india you right. have to realize yeah. this right you yeah. know like the constitution has very strong protections for bureaucrats so usko suspend kar denge maybe uh, mm-hmm. unless there is like a proper criminal case which is proven that he actually tried to extort and right. xyz sections here under the samir van kandi says that the action of the cbi is an act of revenge so it's also two departments going at each other the cbi and the cbi ke sense bhi se revenge le raha hai ये क्यों ऐसे क्यों ओके आई आई डोंट नो थिंग होल थिंग वेरी वेरी फनी एंड एंड यू नो दिस इज अकेंड रैबिट होल आई गॉन डाउन द फर्स्ट वन वॉज Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. Yeah. Now this, okay. This why I find it so funny is just out of the blue. WhatsApp chats are coming out, and then Shah Rukh Khan is being this really meek, submissive character, which he doesn't even play in movies. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. It's just, it's just so, it's just so bizarre. Like he's tell, begging someone for something, and uh, you know, yeah, sure, you can say a father is asking for, but. If a father who is asking a father who's so rich, so loaded, has all the power of the world backing him, hmm. I think he would use other means to get his son out yeah, of trouble uh, than just yes. uh, you know begging a red <laughs> basic officer in life. And he probably did because I think Aryan Khan was out in like some twenty-five days or something, yeah, like a yeah, month. Yeah. He was in jail. Yeah. Yeah. So he did use a lot of his. He would I mean, have. He of course would have considerable yeah. resources to basically yeah. get him out. So yeah. India. I I like how almost all of our uh, topics today have uh, interlinked with each other. Like you guys are saying that AI could not have written something like this. Then I was thinking that Samir Vankhede is known to be living outside his uh, like uh, live live a very flamboyant life. So it is alleged that he uh, probably took bribes. And then oh, I, I I'll uh, connect it. Huh? देखिए पंद्रह लाख जो लिया था वो अगर दो हजार के नोट में लिया होगा. Exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> Just like that, I was like, dude, bribes will become bags will become big again. <laughs> yeah, massive suitcases like wo movies. We show them, they are big, big suitcases. I mean, Sunny Samir Vankhede ke ghar pe agar usne CBI ne raid bhi mara tha. Like I think there was some action taken, like whatever. Okay. If they actually found money in two thousand rupee notes, poor Vankhede. I mean, like agar usne kahi aur bhi stash karke rakha hua, like shit, four months ab mere pas exchange karne ke liye. <laughs> literally poor vankhede in every yeah. sense of the word <laughs> he's also claimed that uh, he's been getting death threats since the last 4 days his wife his wife has been his getting wife, death threats which i i totally believe because if you go to the salman sharuk fandoms online they are oh, crazy absolutely oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah. the wild yeah. messages to you but yeah okay we'll see what uh, what new development happens in this whatever happens will be more interesting than whatever ai will be able to come up with but <laughs> that brings us to the end of this week's episode thank you sindhu so much for joining us and also gives you a lot of hope <laughs> yes it does yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay great thank you thank you it was great you know, anything you. anything you want to plug before we wrap up any story you would have done or something you want us to check out um nothing at the moment but uh, yeah i'll be getting more into different kinds of content creation and doing a uh, lot of personal branding for startups and everything like that so yeah that's that's what okay. i'm looking at now where can people follow you online no uh, linkedin on my okay. linkedin or twitter okay. my twitter handle is at @sindkash k s h and uh, yeah you can follow me cool megna anything you want to plug uh please check out my video on uh, nehru writing a speech no actually ai writing a nehru speech uh, nehru to mar gaye hai kya uh-huh. karenge also check out the episode on socialism according to nehru yeah and uh, i'm also now doing some reels on uh, educational reels i have pivoted abbas earlier <laughs> i was doing like political reels and yeah the instagram ai which is the algorithm was not promoting it so now i'm doing like plain educational constitution related stuff and बहुत बच्चे बहुत है इंस्टाग्राम पे तो वो एकदम फट जाता है उनका दिमाग जब मैं बताता हूँ कि तुम तीन बार वोट करते हो पांच साल में सो दैट्स माई न्यू ऑडियंस एंड आई लव इट गाइज प्लीज चेक आउट माई रील्स नाउ
Sounds uh, good. Please tell us your social media handles. Uh, it's Meghnad S on uh, Instagram and me Meghnad on Twitter and Meghnerd N E R D on YouTube. Cool. Sounds good. And you can follow me on Twitter at Abbas Momin, and I'm Abbas Momin eighty eight on Instagram. And uh, yeah, I just don't have anything to plug. Keep listening to my podcast as it is well, and keep listening to this show as well, Page Ten. And we'll see you next time with uh, some new topics and a new panelist and uh, Chat GPT apparently, because that's the other. Yes. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much for thank watching you. through, and we'll see you all next time. Bye bye. Bye.